I was really, really fortunate that very early on I started to experiment with what mattered to me. Sometimes that got me in a lot of trouble. Mm. What people don't know about me is that I was suspended from school three times for trying out all sorts of things, like things that people would never imagine of someone who goes on to be a monk. I was experimenting with all the drugs in the world. I had multiple relationships. I was really trying to search for some sort of meaning, fulfillment, and as far as long as I've known, I've been chasing thrill. Mm. I really value thrill and feeling like- I did my not life. see that coming. Yeah, no, not many people do. It's, it's very different. From 14 to 18, I was like this kid who just wanted to try new things out. And my parents' rhetoric would always be, well, make sure you get good grades. And I used to think, well, if I can be bad and get good grades, <laughs> then, then it all works, right? Everyone's happy. So that's, that's kind of what I did. And at 18, I was really fortunate when I met a monk. And this monk was invited to speak. And I kind of just went because one of my friends forced me to. At that time, I was listening to CEOs and entrepreneurs and business people and marketers who, who I thought that's what I was aspiring to be like. And then I hear this monk. And he captivated me like no one had ever captivated me before. It was like staring at the most beautiful woman on the planet. You know, I was completely fixated on him and his message. And that is the beginning, without me going into too much detail before we probe, that was the beginning of what changed me. Because I went from being someone who did only want all those things to become successful and trying to, but I started hearing my own inner voice much more in all that noise that I had around me. I remember one of my, my parents had a maths tutor for me because they wanted to be amazing at maths. And I was, I was pretty good at numbers and I'd have this tutor and he'd tell me that. He goes, the reason that you're struggling with the next question is because you're always worried about what your parents think. And, and that really stayed in my head. I was just like, wow, so as long as I'm trapped by what my parents think, I can actually never find the answers to the real questions of life. And there were all these little things happening. I lost two great friends when I was 16. One girl died in a car accident. One guy died because he was involved in drugs and violence. That, that made me rethink everything. I just thought to myself, wait a minute, these were beautiful people, people that I loved, people that in my opinion were good people. And I just lost them in a moment. And it was kind of like this collation of little things that just made me think, wait a minute, having money, having fame, this, that just doesn't seem to add up. And then, and then meeting the monk kind of made that shift possible. And as I said, he was completely captivating. And then I found out that he'd given up jobs in Google and Microsoft to be a monk. And I thought to myself, who does that? You know, he's given up everything that I'm chasing and that all my friends are chasing, but he seems happier than anyone I've ever met before. And he spoke about this incredible principle where he said that we should plant trees under whose shade we do not plan to sit. And he was speaking about this principle of selfless sacrifice. And that kind of just penetrated me right there. When he said the words selfless sacrifice, for the first time in my life, I felt a thrill about something that I'd never felt before. I thought, wow, giving up everything you have for the service of others sounds like the best thing you could possibly do. And I don't know why I had that thought, because I wasn't a spiritual kid growing up. I wasn't a religious kid growing up. I wasn't even a good kid growing up. I was just a rebel, a misfit, trying things out, an experimenter, which I still consider myself. And so what I started to do is I was interning at companies and firms and corporates, thinking I was getting a grad job afterwards. And then I'd spend the rest of my summer holidays interning in India, living with him as a monk. So I'd use all my summer and Christmas holidays to just be out there with the monks. And he introduced me to another 200 to 500 monks that were just like him, just as smart, just as bright, giving up everything they had and using all their skills to make the world a better place. So 